Open the gates of righteousness for us. Open the gates that we may enter and praise the eternal. Pitrulanu sharet tzedek navovam nodeya. Open the gates. Open them wide. Show us the way to enter. We plead to God throughout these high holy days to hear us, to forgive us, to inscribe us, and leave the gates open, a key under the mat, even if we don't deserve it yet, even if we've been out all night, even if we need help, especially when we need help. Show us the way. It is a communal time of year. We gather from far and wide, here and at home, across time zones and states and even countries, and we confess our sins together. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha, for the sins we have committed. And it is also a deeply personal season as each of us strive to settle our tab with God, Hamakom, and with each other, Adam and Chavera, to remember the difficult moments, to painfully and necessarily change, to swallow our pride and ask for forgiveness, the relief, to relieve our own hearts and offer it up when asked. This is a reflection of our communal balance throughout the entire year, the needs of the community and the needs of the individual. To give and to receive tshuva, to experience and to witness the turning and the returning, it is an intimate honor, both acutely personal and profoundly communal. Miriam Ackerman Somer, a rabbinical student at Yeshivat Maharat, the first Orthodox Yeshiva in North America to ordain women, teaches, Tshuva begins inside as a realization of one's vulnerability, but it essentially comes from the outside. It is the I forgive you that we anxiously pray for throughout the Yamim Noraim, these days of awe, and that we will hopefully come before others and before the great other, God, who teaches us how to open ourselves to otherness as God mercifully opens the heavenly gates to listen to our cries throughout Yom Kippur. Pitrulanu Sharet Tzedek, open the gates of righteousness for us. Pitruli, Open the gates for me. I am the child of an interfaith marriage. I am queer and I am a cis woman. Pitruli, open the gates for me. I pleaded as I worked up the courage to consider that I could become a rabbi, a link in a long, mostly male chain. As I walked this path with trepidation, I began to notice gates left open for me, for others like me. Gates opened by Rabbi Sally Presan, the first female rabbi ordained in this country, by Rabbi Deborah Brin, the first openly gay rabbi ordained, by Rabbi Alexander Schindler of blessed memory, who codified patrilineal descent in our movement, by Rabbi Lisa Edwards, by Rabbi Elise Frischman, and so many more. Gates that were once welded shut, open by time and righteous anger, pleas and perseverance, cries to the eternal by reimagining our sacred tradition as rabbis have been doing for generations, millennia. And those who came before me shaped my path, made it easier, cleared some brush, and left the gates open, the gates they had fought so hard to unseal, left open for me so I could walk through a little easier, 
so I could open gates for the next generation of the marginalized righteous. Pitruli, open the gates for me. Pitrulanu, open the gates of righteousness for us, that we may enter and praise Adonai. This is the gateway to the eternal. Fifty years of Beth Chaim Chadashim, the first LGBTQIA plus synagogue in the world, 50 years of women in the rabbinate, 50 years of gate openers yearning to emulate the creator, to see ourselves in the image as leaders, as teachers, as builders, as new links in an old chain. Psalm 18 is home to one version of Pitruli in our sacred text, one place where we find this metaphorical masterpiece. And our great sages were just as taken, and they composed a midrash on this one verse, Pitruli Sharet Tzedek, open the gates of righteousness for me. And this midrash goes, at the time of judgment in Holam Haba, the world to come, Everyone will be asked, what was your occupation? If the person answers, I was a feeder of the hungry, they will say to that person, Zeshare Ladonai, this is the gateway to God. Enter, feeder of the hungry. I was a clother of the naked, and they will say to that person, Zeshare Ladonai, this is the gate of God. Enter, clother of the naked. And similarly, those who raised orphans and did sadaka and performed acts of loving kindness. Who can say, I have done all of these. Let all the gates open for me. Let it be me, and let it be you, and let it be us. And let us enter with gratitude for our creator. Let us enter and leave the gate ajar behind us. We, beloved community, know all too well that Psalm 118 continues with this prophetic reminder. Evan ma'asu habonim haitala rosh pina. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. We know it well. The words that we emblazoned on our time capsule this summer, also on Rabbi Lisa's talit, our beautiful, metaphorical, rallying call to all of the marginalized, a reminder for each of us that we who may have once been deemed worthless and cast aside are integral to the whole, a reminder that there are stones still left to uncover and finally set in their rightful place, a reminder that we are stronger in our diversity. So what gates can we open together in this new year? What precious stones need, un need finding, uncovering. I am here before you, able to do this righteous work because gates were open for me and not only opened but kept open with intention. And it is my responsibility now, it is all of our responsibilities to open new gates to shine light on the path towards God for all who yearn to enter. Let our tshuva return us to this path. Pitrulanu sharet tzedek, navovam no deya, open the gates of righteousness for us. Show us the way to enter. When we reach Ne'ilah 24 hours from now, as our holiest day of Yom Kippur wanes, our futures are being sealed. The gates of heaven close slowly but surely with mercy yet purpose. We turn to God one last time to accept our tshuva, open and vulnerable, weary, bare, resolved. And we plead one last time to be sealed in the book of life. And communities across the globe. Sometimes throughout this service, the ark remains open, a grand and beautiful symbol that the gates of heaven are still wide open. And as the sun sets and this holiest day comes to a close, so do the gates and the ark doors 
in kind. And we sing, El Nora Alila, El Nora Alila, God of awe, God of wonder, grant us pardon as the gates begin to close. And though the gates of heaven might close as the blanket of night falls over us tomorrow, we can still open gates. Throughout 5783, we can look for the righteousness in others. We can champion those who might only see closed gates in their path. We can make sure to keep gates open behind us, to expand the breadth and depth of our creativity and expression, to share our paths, ensure our continuity, to honor those who came before, to honor those who come after. Years ago, I added a note in my calendar on the date October 5th, tomorrow. I saw it earlier this week when I realized that October 5th was also Yom Kippur this year. My note is simply a series of emojis. A red heart, an orange fruit emoji, a yellow heart and a green one, a blue, then purple, you get it. Side note, for those wondering, I created this note in my calendar before the orange heart emoji existed, so I had to use the orange fruit emoji. <laughs> Following the rainbow of hearts and fruit is an emoji of two women standing hand in hand. Any guesses what October 5th means to me? October 5th was the day I came out. Did you guess? <laughs> and a few years later, when I decided to note this anniversary in my calendar, emojis had also just come out. <laughs> Never would I have thought that on this day, that years later, I could be standing here with all of you, rainbow hearts and souls aligned, righteousness abound. Never could I have imagined that crossing the threshold of that gate could lead me to be the rabbi of a community of radical welcomers, passionate teachers, history makers, diversity celebrators, feeders and clothers, creative ritualists, storytellers, fighters and lovers, gate openers. The honor of celebrating this anniversary of sorts with you on this holiest day is awesome. And I am grateful because it might never have happened had just a few of those gates remained closed on any of our paths. Open the gates of righteousness for us, for all Israel, for people everywhere, the gates of acceptance and atonement, beauty and creativity, the gates of dignity, empathy and faith, the gates of generosity and hope, the gates of insight and joy, of knowledge and love, the gates of meaning and nobility, the gates of openness, patience, and quest for peace, the gates of renewal, song and tranquility, the gates of understanding and virtue, the gates of wisdom and wonder, exaltation, youth and old age, the gates of Zion, reborn and rebuilt in our time. Open the gates, open them wide, show us the way to enter. I am here because the gates were opened. I am here to open gates. We are here to open gates. <laughs>